Hey guys, what's up? In this video series, we're gonna be looking at five Excel data transformation techniques that I've used and that I've created in my Excel dashboard toolbox product. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually create each of those five dashboards. And today, the first one that we're gonna be looking at is how to dynamically highlight records in your data sets using a dropdown and conditional formatting. Stick around and let's check it out. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is how to dynamically highlight records in a data set using a drop down. So in my Excel dashboard toolbox, this is the first tool that is available. If you click on go to dashboard here, the idea behind this is actually being able to select a part number from a combo box form control from our developer tab, and then being able to dynamically highlight using conditional formatting the record below in the data set that is being selected. So you can use this. This is kind of the first step, the precursor to actually building your full dashboard. But this is one of the uh, crucial steps to actually doing this and making your dashboard even more visual or easier to see. All right, so we have a very basic data set. And what we want to do is create a drop down that highlights and shows all of our part numbers in our listing. So the first thing I'm going to actually do here is create a name range uh, in the dashboard for the part numbers that are listed below. So I just selected my range and you can actually use this name range box and just type in items. So I've, I've done that now. So if I want to go in here and actually select items, you can see that it'll actually bring up that, that set of data and we can use that now uh, anywhere in our dashboard. So whether it be for the form control that we're going to be implementing or if it was for a formula. So the next thing we're going to actually make sure of is that you have the developer tab accessible. So let's select this drop down up here in the top left hand corner. If you don't have it available, go to more commands. You're going to go to customize ribbon and then you're going to make sure that developer is actually selected. So we're going to hit OK. My developer tab is already there. Um, we're going to use this insert option and we're going to select the combo box. So once I've done that, you can actually highlight the area that you want to place that combo box in and you can rename that combo box if you wanted to to something like item so when you select it you can see that it's called item uh, the next step of this process is to actually right click it and we want to go to the format control for the uh, drop down box or the combo box so the input range is going to be the list of part numbers that we've already created using the name range so i can actually type in items which is our name range that i've created I'm next going to go to this cell link and we want to find a spot in our dashboard where we can actually um, decide on which number of our uh, drop down is selected or which number is indexed. So that's the value that's going to be returned for us. So we want this to be on a separate page on our calculation page. So we're going to select that arrow. We're going to head over to calculations. I'm going to select the drop down selection uh, cell, which is C3 on the calculations tab. We're going to pop back over here and I'm just going to reselect this. And I've got six items, I believe, on my dashboard. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in fact. So I'm just going to select seven as my drop down lines. And I am going to hit OK. So what this drop down line says is, hey, show me the number of items that you want to actually show. So if I only want to show the first seven records that were in my input range, then it would only show me the first seven records. If you wanted to show 100 and we only had seven, well, you'd have a bunch of blank records in your drop down. So we're going to hit OK now. And the next thing that you're going to realize here is all of our part numbers are available. So now that we have all those part numbers available, let's head over to step number two. All right, so the second step of building this dashboard and making sure that we can dynamically highlight a line based off of the selection is to actually create and determine which part number is being selected. So in order to do that, we're going to use the index formula on the calculations tab. We're going to head over to calculations and you can see I've got this item number selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in equals and I'm going to type in index and the what the index formula allows us to do is actually select an array in this case it's going to be our items in our list because that's what our format control combo box is actually using as the range as well and then we're going to use that to then decide uh, which item number is selected so based off of the selection on the format control of the combo box you can see this number gets generated so it's saying hey the the seventh item of our drop down box is being selected based off of that item list. If I select that now and I close the bracket, you'll see that it should reflect exactly what is being selected 
on our combo box. So if I selected part number 1006, you can see it selected that. If I go over to part number 1002, you can see that it also selects that. So all the index formula does is actually uses a value and then moves from the current um, array of uh, that you've selected and then moves the number of cells uh, down based off of what you've selected. And that is, of course, based off of the row number. In this case, you can also shift uh, to the right or to the left using uh, the column number as well. Okay, so now that that is done, we're going to move to step three. Let's have a look. All right, so in step number two, what we did was we were able to determine and use the index formula to decide which part number was being selected in our combo box. And that was calculated on our calculations tab. So you can see that that is now available. So what we're going to do is use that um, formula or that value in cell uh, C4 of the calculations tab. And we're going to be able to actually select and highlight uh, the record. So this is kind of the last step of the process. So what we're going to use is conditional formatting and we're going to go down to uh, create a new rule and we're going to use a formula, formula to determine which cells to format. And the next step is going to actually be typing in equals. So in this case, if this value uh, C6 and what we're going to do is I want this formula to actually follow me as we go. We want to always stay. So this this dollar sign is saying, hey, always, this is kind of an absolute and a relative reference. So we're absolute on the column. So we always want to stay on uh, column C. And then we're um, relative on the row number. So the row number can adjust down as we move our formula to other cells. So this is going to allow us to allow this conditional formatting to uh, flip to each of the individual lines that we select or each of the rows that we select and, and get that formula to work based off that part number. So what we're going to do now is select equals head over to the calculations tab we're going to select c4 and you can see that that is an absolute and we don't want to change that as we move the formula so it's always going to be referring to the item number that is selected we're going to go decide on how we want to format that cell so i'm going to go to borders i like to include a little bit of a border so we'll add lines here and then what we want to do is add fill so we can say hey i want to select green for fill so this is going to actually highlight the record if it is selected based off of our drop down if I hit OK now, you can see nothing has actually happened, but if I were to select part number 1000, you can actually see that it'll highlight that knowing that the value uh, part number 1000 was selected. So what we want to do is make sure that the whole line is selected now. So in order to do that, we want to apply that conditional formatting now to the entire data set that we have showing down here from uh, B6 to F12. So we'll head over to Manage Rules, I'm going to select the rule, of course, that we've created. And in this case, we want to apply it to the entire range that we have for our data set. So if I select our entire data set, like I said, from B6 to F12, uh, and I click that arrow again, and we hit apply, we hit OK, you can see that it has selected and highlighted the record that I've got uh, chosen in our combo box. So now if I select part number 1005, you can see that it actually dynamically updates and highlights that record for us. So that is basically this dashboard trick in a whole. Please make sure if you want, uh, check out the next video that you have at the end of this video. And if you want to purchase this dashboard, of course, at 20% uh, off, just check the link below the video in the description. And we will see you next time.